but individually about the um, the Cuban Five? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, they're all, each of them, very special men because you, you can imagine if you have to infiltrate a terrorist group and win their confidence, uh, it requires great discipline and a great uh, sense of dedication to your people, which they had. So, for example, René González uh, is a pilot, and in 1990, he pretended to hijack a plane from Cuba to fly it into Miami, because a lot of the terrorist groups in Miami, which, you know, train with arms and the Everglades and all those notorious images, they have been infiltrated before, and they suspect people who come in and join their group. So René flew this plane into Miami, and he became an instant hero when he said, I want to defect from Cuba, I can't stand it there anymore. <laughs> and then he infiltrated Brothers to the Rescue very effectively. Wow. Um, by doing so, he left his family for several years before they finally came into Miami. Sacrifice. Very much a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So when his wife moved into Miami with their 12-year-old or teenager daughter, and he was arrested, she was a permanent resident. She became a permanent resident in the U.S. And when he was arrested, when they were all arrested, the Cubans were shocked in Miami. The right wings, like, oh, we thought they were one of us. But they took particular attention to punish him extra. And they told him, the FBI said, turn evidence against the others and we'll make it easy on you. And he said, no, no way. You know, I'm not going to tell my brothers because we're on a mission. So they arrested his wife. They were going to deport her from the U.S. as a threat to him. Mm -hmm. And they held her in jail for three months. Their baby was about a year and a half by that time. They had a second baby. And that baby had to be taken care of by a great-grandmother. So the day that they deported the wife, they said to her, would you like to see your husband one more time? She'd been in jail, orange uniform. He was in orange uniform in detention. They took her in. They shackled them apart in a chair and said, you have one more chance to turn evidence, you know, to, to rat, to lie, to give right. false testimony. And he looked at her and he said, you look beautiful in orange. <laughs> like, whatever happens to either of us, we're not going to collaborate with the FBI. So he has not been able to see his wife for 11 years. Gerardo, in Victorville, who has double life, is prohibited from seeing his wife because the U.S. government claims she's a national security risk. She's a slight woman, you know, works in the scientific field in Cuba, has no interest in coming to the U.S. except to see her husband. She hasn't seen him in 11 years. Um, you know, they're desperate to have children. And if he has double life and she can't come into the U.S., are they really saying that they will never see each other again? This is a sort of... The meanness is, is mind-boggling. It really is. Very the, the sheer meanness... Yeah. of this system. But their their persona really shines through and we just in the National Committee to Free the Cuban Five inaugurated Antonio Guerrero's art show. It is stunning. And if you look at the website freethefive.org with five spelled out, you can see some of his paintings, see his poetry. Uh, right. He's become truly a remarkable artist. All right. And as an article said in Colorado Springs at the exhibit, they said, he shows a remarkable med sense of meditation and calm and no rancor at all in his paintings because he believes in what he did. And none of them regret it. Right. None of them regret right. it. No, well, in fact, they're, they're proud of what they did. Of course, because they're defending a country, a revolutionary country, mm -hmm. and a revolutionary people, which is what a stand-up person should do, yeah. right? Well, we only have a couple of minutes left, Gloria, so I'd like to give you the opportunity to have a few last words before we make a few announcements. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, um, really, thank you for having us on the show, and everybody can do something to help free them. But in addition, you know, we always have to remember the other prisoners, Leonard Paltier and oh, Mia Jamal, and the two million who right. so many. are in for being poor, for having no opportunity, and for a system that grinds people down in jail. Right. Now, they have a, people have a chance to protest tomorrow at 11 o'clock at the UN Plaza in the Civic Center. UN protest Plaza. the wars. The wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, the cutbacks, the poverty, the um, 
Everything. Everything. This uh, money for jobs, not for this war. convoluted health care proposal. Thank you so much, Gloria, for Thank joining you. us. And thanks, Stephen Leader, for board hopping. Uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in to Freedom is a Constant Struggle. And uh, tune in, please, next week when we'll be talking about Honduras and Haiti with Emiliano Echeverria and Pierre Labossiere. Good evening. I think we... we, we, <laughs> we oh, I'd like to say one thing. Nothing will change in this country until the people realize it's the people who've always made the change, not a president, exactly. not Congress. Exactly. And the more that we keep waiting for a president to do it, it'll just keep on getting worse until we fight back. Yes, we do. And all power to the people. <laughs> well, we didn't. We kind of blew it this time. <laughs> but uh, it was a, we. 